like I was in the same room as all these legends and with all these new people who I'm sure are going to be legends themselves. <laughs> you know, it's being done with such love and such enthusiasm from everybody. And I think that you'll be able to feel that coming off the screen. It means so much to so many people. You just know what it's going to be like in the cinema. Star Wars is an important part of everyone's history. It's a beautiful thing to actually be involved in it. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is going to be my breakdown of the Star Wars Episode 7 footage from Comic-Con. Instead of bringing like, like a traditional trailer, they brought a bunch of BTS footage and did a whole bunch of stuff. They actually had a pretty badass presentation. Even, even though everyone was really excited about Deadpool stuff, I think that Star Wars had one of the better actual presentations. So here we go. We start on the planet of Jakku. That's Rey's home. Obviously it looks a lot like Tatooine, but it's a completely different planet. The events of this film will pick up after what is being called the Battle of Jakku. So imagine like the Battle of Endor just leaving a lot of debris. This isn't the same thing, but it's similar to that. that that's why we see the Star Destroyer in the trailer that's just been crashed on the planet. Moving to interior of the Millennium Falcon, obviously very familiar. Who else got really excited when it looked like they hadn't cleaned this in 30 years? Seriously, if you had a black light, it looked like a Jackson Pollock painting. This is an interior of the Imperial base. They said, they said that the main base for the First Order is being called the Starkiller base, just an homage of Luke Skywalker's original name in the script. He was, he was originally called Luke Starkiller, but then George Lucas changed it. They did a lot of that in the film. It's the same thing with Star Wars Rebels, where they're basing a lot of the visual look on Ralph McQuarrie's concept art. So when they say they're going back to the source material, they're, they're going back to George Lucas's source material that he used to build his movies on. Shot of R2-D2, looking a little bit older, but none the worse for wear. The background almost looks like the Jawa Sandcrawler from A New Hope. This is one of the first shots we saw of the, the First Order Stormtroopers way, way back when they released the very first trailer. Then we get a shot of two new aliens, presumably somewhere on Jakku. It seems like most of the shots that aren't happening on the Imperial base are happening on Jakku. We don't know anything about what race either of them are. They could be completely new aliens that they created for the film. I think that that was their intention, just to make things look like stuff from the classic trilogy, but be completely new. A lot of people are calling her like the new slave Leia, but I'm not going to think of her that way, just because it doesn't look quite that salacious. Which is interesting because the name of Jabba's pet was Salacious Crumb. Here's a shot of a crashed First Order TIE fighter. The only thing that looks really different about this is the fact that they gave it the black paint job. Otherwise, it looks pretty close to the classic TIE Fighter. There are rumors that this could be Finn's TIE Fighter. Another interior shot of the Falcon. They, they essentially, when, whenever they were shooting the film, they built like a, a full Millennium Falcon to scale so that they could shoot inside of it. I'm waiting for Lucasfilm to release a 3D video of it, or even like a 360 video. They did that at, with a Warcraft movie. Legendary released a 360 degree video where you could just pan around and look at Stormwind. More new practical aliens. There, there's, a, there's a ton of CG in the film. They were really honest about that, but they tried to build as much stuff as possible. If you look in the background though, there is a picture of Admiral Akbar, so he could totally appear in this movie. Or we could at least see Mon Calamari. This is a shot of Oscar Isaac's character Poe Dameron on the Imperial base, the Starkiller base. This is Lupita in mocap. The name of her character is Maz Kanata. We don't know what she looks like, but I'm, I'm pretty excited. Andy Serkis is also playing a full mocap character. Rumored to be like the new Emperor level Big Bad. Here's a shot of 3PO getting put together. He has a red arm in this movie for some reason. We don't have any idea why, but presumably he's, he's broken down a couple more times in the time since episode 6, so they, they needed to repair him with spare parts. This is actually just a shot of the film camera they're shooting on, ju just to show you that they are shooting on actual film. It's the same type of film stock that they shot the original trilogy on. Here's more shots of them shooting in Tunisia in the desert. They shot a lot of this in the desert. T Tunisia is just where they've shot all of the desert scenes in all of the Star Wars movies. So even though this movie won't feature Tatooine, it will look a lot like Tatooine. This is a shot of Poe Dameron running around one of the new blue X-Wings. Here's a shot of Adam Driver's character, Kylo Ren, descending from his ship. It definitely gives you a vibe of Darth Vader walking down the troop transport during Return of the Jedi. This is one of the new flame troopers. There, there's just a couple of variations on the different types of First Order stormtroopers. Chrome Trooper right now is my favorite, which is Gwendolyn Christie's character. Here's a shot of Simon Pegg confirming that he's in the film. He, he has like a, like a full-blown suit, so it seems like he's playing a creature. He might be providing some sort of performance and his voice. But like his face, Simon Pegg's face won't be in the movie. He won't look like himself. 
Here's official Chewie on set in costume. I think it's nice that they asked him back, that they asked Peter Mayhew back, because they could have put anybody in that suit and just done his voice. It should be noted that Daisy Ridley is sitting in Han Solo's seat of the Millennium Falcon, sitting in the captain's chair, but th this could be them just hanging out on set. Here's a shot of what the Resistance X-Wing TIE Fighter helmets are going to look like. The Resistance is what the Rebellion is called in these films. So the Rebels exist, but they're called the Resistance. Just like the First Order is what the Empire becomes. Here's actually what looks like one half of a gonk droid, which I think is kind of funny. It's nice that they brought that back. Here's a shot of a red and black Stormtrooper that we haven't seen before. It's just like one of the other new variations that we don't know about yet. More interior and exterior shots of the Falcon. Obviously, this is going to be one of the shots of the gun turrets. Here's a shot of 3PO and what looks like the, the Rebel base from A New Hope. I'm expecting this to be somewhere else, though. I don't think that they'll go back to Yavin. Here's Donald Gleason out of costume. We found out that he's playing a villain named General Hux in the First Order. The people on the panel made a joke about British people always playing villains. Just, you know, just because Gwendolyn Christie, another Brit in the film, also playing an evil character. We really don't know what's going on with Donald Gleason's character other than that he's a general, so he's probably the one with Adam Driver's character giving orders. Here's another shot of J.J. Abrams and Lawrence Kasdan sitting on that First Order base, the Starkiller base. This even looks like an up-close shot of Admiral Akbar. Here's a shot of Carrie Fisher in costume. She actually looks pretty awesome. Here's Oscar Isaac without his helmet on. He, he said that his character believes himself to be the best damn pilot in the galaxy, so we'll see how that goes whenever he meets Han Solo. They didn't say officially when we're going to get the next trailer, probably sometime in November. I mean, they, they were kind of vague about that. But when we get within about six weeks of the movie, we'll probably get another big one. They didn't say a whole lot about the anthology films that are going to be taking place between episode 7, 8, and 9. But they'll probably start releasing more information as we get closer to episode 7. What's going to happen is, is that every year they want to release a new Star Wars movie. So like every two years, they'll have like one of the new big films like episode 7, 8, 9. And then in between those, they'll have the anthology films. We already know we're getting a Han Solo film. We're getting another film called Red 5, which is, is like a story that takes place in the past. It's the story of the Rebels stealing the plans for the Death Star. So even though a lot of these spin-off films will, will close gaps between movies, they'll also jump back in time. So we will get to see stuff from the classic trilogy, stuff from that era. But let me know what you guys think about the footage. I mean, did this get you excited for the film? I know everyone was a little disappointed they didn't show a new trailer, but... Think about it this way, they took everyone to a live concert with John Williams, so it's like, they, they literally bent over backwards to do something awesome for the audience at Comic-Con. It's one of those Deadpool situations where the cast and the producers of the film acknowledge that this would not be happening if not for the fans. Like, the fans are the reason that these movies are getting made. So, what's going to happen later tonight is I have a couple more trailers that I need to work through, but I'm, I'm seeing Ant-Man tonight, so I'm going to post a non-spoilery review of that next. That probably won't post till Friday morning, but be sure to subscribe to get it. I'll do like an Easter egg video with spoilers after that, like after everyone has a chance to see it. So, while you guys wait for all that stuff to post, you can click here for all my Comic-Con trailer breakdowns. I just posted a Warcraft one. Uh, just a heads up, they changed some stuff about the lore in the movie. So, a lot of people were a little confused about the breakdown that I did. And you can click here for my breakdown of the Deadpool footage. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.